New to SES2 2023 is the ability to create your own material and member finishes. This video will be an overview of the new surface finishes setup, adding surface finishes to the member and material level, tools that are helpful, and surface finishes on the drawing. In your project settings job, there is a surface finishes setup now. Inside here we have your default surface finish for the model for the member and materials. You have your billet material format that you can pick from how you want your surface finish information called out in the bill of material. You can add it to the material lines only. You can add it to all lines in the bill of material, including the member of material, or you can add it to line one only of your bill of material. Below we have the surface finishes table. You can define everything that you need for the existing legacy defaults or finishes and any new finishes that you want to create for this job. On the left, we have a field for hiding, and this would hide anything that you don't want to see in the list for the member or material edit screens. Then you have the display name, which is going to be visible in the member and material edit screens when you go to specify a new finish. We still have the 12 legacy defaults from previous versions. They're always going to stay here due to how they're exposed to the Python API. Next, we have the abbreviations field. This is going to be utilized in your bill of material if it's being added to your bill of material and also how you're going to be exporting it, let's say, to Tecla Pyrofab. The next column is just if you want to have your finish galvanized or not. Then you have the preparation and processes such as cleaning specs or really anything that you'd like to denote here. In the source column, it's going to be similar to the preparation process. It's not going to be used anywhere in SDS2, but more for like tracking purposes. You maybe have two similar finishes, but you want to come from two different sources. You can define that here. You have the ability to add this information to your bill of material. You can break your major marks apart by finish. You can break your submaterial marks apart by finish. And then you can add a suffix for the minor mark. This is going to come into effect when you want to break your submaterial marks apart by finish. So let's say you have a BP1 underscore P2. In the past, you could only specify finish on the material level, but we have expanded this to the member level and whatever finish is applied to that member is propagated down to all the attached submaterial on that member. When I drop down the surface finish in the member edit screen, you can see that there is no longer none or any of the undefines since they're hidden from my selection. I'm going to change my surface finish to blue. I do have a reset button which I'll come back to later. And then we have a file cabinet which will show the table of everything in my surface finish setup and which finishes are hidden or not. Now when I go to edit my material, you'll see the auto checkbox is set on and since it is propagating from my member, I have blue selected. I can uncheck this and override it and maybe set it to red oxide. I have the same file cabinet in case I have two different surface finishes with maybe the same name but different sources. If I come back into the member edit screen for the beam, you'll see that there's an icon now that appears and it states that the submaterials have user finishes. If I want to make sure that everything has the same surface finish, I can check on the reset box and it will make all my submaterials attached to this member have the same surface finish. When it comes to members like stairs and handrail, they can have a primary and secondary surface finishes. So in my general settings, I have my surface finish set to red oxide. Then when I come down to my general stringer settings, it's inheriting the same surface finish since I have it checked on for auto. I can override this, or I can always check on the auto to reset it back. For my treads, I do have this unchecked and it's set to sandblasted. I'm just going to edit this beam and show that the surface finish is red oxide. 
But if I edit the column and change it to blue for the surface finish, you'll now see that my shear tab attached to that column will take on the surface finish of the column, not the beam, since it's attached to the column. Moving on to some tools that are useful when it comes to surface finish, I'll start with the update attributes. I can mass reset the surface finish, or I can update the surface finish to maybe painted by area. Now when I go into status display, maybe I want all my member surface finishes set to green that are painted. We can come into the member status and now a surface finish is added in here. We've always been able to show the material surface finish, but I just wanted to show that we also have auto surface finish as well. I have a status that's already created, so I'm going to upload it for my material surface finishes like painted, blue, red oxide, yellow, zinc, and sandblasted. I'm going to come into the base plate for that column that I set to blue. And I'll look at the surface finish since it was set to blue. In my setup, I had it with the suffix of P1. My other column is painted and I put a P2 for the suffix. So I just wanted to show that this shows up in the base plate piece mark as well. And then I'll just show a red oxide one that I did not put a suffix on. Another tool would be to utilize the surface finish and advanced selection. Since I created the surface finish in the setup, I can just put m.finish equals equals painted. If I wanted to look for a legacy like red oxide, I would need to put m.finish equals equals surface finish and then the name. Just a couple more examples would be selecting material and searching by abbreviation. And the final is the material finish of blue. We do have a few reports installed with SCS2 to run for material finish. The first one will be surface finish by members. You can see that the piece mark, finish, abbreviation, prep, and source are in this report. I can also run a report for surface finish by materials. This report shows piece mark, finish, abbreviation, prep, source, and the total surface area. Before taking a look at the beam drawing, I'm going to go back as a refresher in my surface finishes setup, and you can select which surface finishes you want to show up in the build material. Another area to go into is the bill and material layout. We now have a surface finishes line, but I do want to activate this, so I'm going to put the plot order as maybe eight. When I go to detail this beam, I can now see that the surface finish column in the bill of material. This is also reading from my setup on how I wanted to show everything, so I put it on all material lines only. On my detail sheet, since I already have a bill of material added to the detail sheet, I'm just going to update it with the surface finish column. And then I'm going to add a table and add a report that's installed for surface finishes. When I go to add my beam, you'll see in the bill of material, it's all filled out. And then once I hit save, my table will fill out with the piece mark, finish, abbreviation, prep, source, and surface area. You can also add this table and report for your gather sheets.